Hello, Bremerton, and welcome to this edition of the Bremerton Beat Blast. I'm your host, Kitsap Sun reporter Josh Farley. I'm standing on top of the Norm Dix Government Center at City Hall in downtown Bremerton. And you know what I've got, five stories that you just got to know about happening in Bremerton this week. Story number one is that traffic is going to be impeded by several construction projects happening here in Bremerton. You already know that the Minette Bridge has been closed for the last few days for some state work being done to it, but there are five other intersections in Bremerton that are seeing an overhaul that will make them more pedestrian and bicycle friendly. There are countdown clocks, striping in the intersections, better lighting going into five locations, one of which is the corner of First Street and SR 304, better known as Charleston Beach Road. Another is 11th at Kitsap Way. We also have Kitsap Way at Harlow uh, Drive, which is actually getting a pedestrian island to make it possible to get across a very wide stretch of Kitsap Way. We have 6th and High, and we have 11th and High, and there's one note that you already know about at 6th and High, which is that it is getting one of these flashing beacons that'll make it possible to push a button and you'll be able to cross the street when you are on foot wandering about town. Story number two is that Bremerton Mayor Patty Lynn, whose office I'm standing right next to, happens to have a new slogan for the city she's debuting. The Legacy City of Bremerton is what she's going with. It will actually debut on the Washington State Ferry that is being built for Bremerton, the Chimicum. The Chimicum will debut on the ferry run in March of 2017. It will include 16 works of art from local artists that were selected by the Bremerton Arts Commission. And within the caption of those photographs, you'll see the slogan, The Legacy City of Bremerton. I spoke with Mayor Lent about how she came up with her new city motto. Actually, it came from different ideas. I had three or four different episodes that have happened in my um, first and second term of office. One being the reunion of the USS Parchy. And we were talking about people from all of the United States that served on this very secret but very important submarine, being the most decorated of any war and of any place in the world. That's a legacy, and it's in Bremerton, and will be here forever. And the second thing is that on 4th Street, as we're developing, we're going to have a Quincy Square, because Quincy Jones really got his very first start back in 44, as a young eight-year-old, when he played the piano at the Armory after breaking in. But these are things that make us different than Paul's Bow, as a little Norway, or Gig Harbor being a maritime city, and we're more than a Navy town. So a legacy, we're going to find all the different things that have come before us, including our Armed Forces Day Parade, and the things that are exciting for someone to experience when they're visiting the city of Bremerton. Story number three on our list this week comes to us from another Castle Arcade on Pacific Avenue in downtown Bremerton. It is there that Helios Warp has debuted a new arcade game, but this is not just any old arcade game. It was actually designed by a Bremerton programmer named Mike Sloan. Mike works in Seattle but lives over here and he actually created this game. He wanted to create a game that would actually see all of the proceeds raised by those who play it go to charity. I spoke with Mike about developing the game and who the proceeds are going to. I decided I was going to try and um, do the indie game development thing. Um, turned out not to be that financially viable and um, the more that I let go of the financial part of it, the more fun it became. And so I ended up releasing a game last, last spring that made no money, but it was fun to make and it was fun to play. And so uh, this spring, uh, I actually had a dream that, uh, that I ported it to Arcade, and then I, and then I did it. And it was actually a pretty, uh, really fun process. The game is called Helios Warp. It's sort of a, it's an infinite obstacle course, and so it's uh, based on a high score setup. The idea is just to beat the score of the guy before you. Um, so everybody just kind of comes in, you drop in a quarter, you get a couple tries to knock out the guy before you or try and set a high score for the day or, or even for all time. Uh, the proceeds are going to the West Sound Free Clinic. It's a, um, it's a clinic for underinsured or uninsured people here in Kitsap County. And um, I've, I've got some friends and family who are involved in that uh, program and uh, it's really something that we believe in deeply. Story number four, 
Sheridan Village on the east side of town has had its share of troubles finding occupants. But in the last year, five new businesses have opened there, including a new salad shack. I spoke with the owner about how that complex is experiencing a bit of a rebirth. The community is starting to boom and people want a healthy option and with all of the clinics and the rehabilitation centers and the hospital and the bridge crossing that they're doing and the building of Lebo Field, I think I'm a perfect fit here. And even though the hospital's leaving, I think the community will accept the healthy option and they'll like to you know, if the food's good and the service is good, they're going to stay. It doesn't take the hospital to keep me. Finally, story number five rounding out this week's Bremerton Beat Blast is that you may have noticed that the MV Kirkland ferry has left the Bremerton Marina. Now, this was the ferry that was here for about three years. It's owned by Captain Christian Lent, who owns a number of other historic vessels that reside in the Bremerton Marina. But he could not turn down an offer to bring the vessel home to Astoria. It's going home there. there it was welcomed to a huge celebration. A bit harrowing for Lint and crew to get the boat down there. They encountered some rough weather along the way and barely made it with their fuel supply, but it is now in Astoria. So if you ever want to see the Kirkland slash Tourist 2 again, you're going to have to travel down to Astoria, Oregon to see it. That's going to do it for this edition of the Bremerton Beat Blast. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you again next Tuesday.